Hello, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. London Irish have dropped out the Premiership. They have entered administration. What we all suspected might happen, unfortunately, has happened. That's what I'm getting into in this video. The fate of London Irish, what it might now mean for obviously a lot of those players and staff, um, and also the questions that once again it poses to professional rugby in England at this moment in time, which has had off the field an absolutely atrocious year. So that's what I'm talking about in the video. You can drop a comment down below to leave your thoughts on what is a pretty thorny issue. Uh, if you can subscribe to the channel and like the video as well, I'd really appreciate it. But let's get into it. So it feels bonkers, really, that I look back to the start of the season and everything that was going on with Worcester, the uncertainty around Wasps, and then what transpired with those two clubs dropping out the league, entering administration, and then at the end of the season as well, where we've had the rumours and the stories about London Irish, the players and staff not being paid on time, an American consortium reportedly being in discussions to come in and buy the club, but for whatever reason, it's never got itself over the line. And here we are again, after a brilliant Premiership final just the other week, London Irish have been suspended by the RFU. That was the news yesterday on Tuesday. They've been suspended, then now entered administration and they have dropped out of the Gallagher Premiership. And I suppose, I think I've always said really on these videos, when it was Wasps, when it was Worcester, your heart goes out to the staff and players and people that work at the club because hundreds of people are going to be affected by this. They are going to lose their jobs. There's going to be a huge amount of uncertainty within their lives. So we hope that they're OK. And also then the fans as well. I can't really imagine what it would be like to be a London Irish supporter and all of a sudden you don't have a club to support. A club that has 125 years of history at this moment in time is no more. Whether they will reappear again lower down in the pyramid or lower down the ladder, who knows, we'll wait and see. But it's ultimately just a desperately, desperately sad time for the club. And what this has done is once again highlighted the precarious financial position of English club rugby, which has reared its head again this season, as I mentioned, with everything with Worcester and with Wasps. But for me, again, just reinforces the point that we need a reset in the club game in England. And I've spoken about it. In fact, I remember doing a video on just this on the channel, which was that English rugby needs an independent regulator. I think that is so clear that it hasn't been run well enough in the last 25 years of professionalism because we've ultimately ended up at this point in that the business model of the sport really, as far as I can tell, is kind of based upon football, where you're reliant upon wealthy individuals to bankroll these clubs. It hasn't been run in a sustainable way. And that's why we've seen clubs go out of business. It's probably been exacerbated by COVID. But even so, I think ultimately, a lot of what we've seen is pretty poor administration. So we need an independent regulator. We need someone to make all of the decisions. And the other point just off the back of this, and whilst Premiership Rugby and the RFU, I'm sure, well, definitely could have done things better over the years. Mark Evans pointed out on Twitter, he made a really good point, the CEO of the Fijian Drua at the moment in Super Rugby. He's held positions over here with Harlequins and really experienced rugby administrator, always a really interesting listen when you hear him talk on the game but he made the point on Twitter that everyone who's throwing stones at the RFU it's the clubs that for the most part of professionalism have governed themselves ultimately and a good example of this is thinking back to when the Queen passed away last year in September and there was a whole farce of other sports saying we're not playing this weekend we are playing this weekend and rugby dragging its heels because it had to get the clubs around the table because they got to vote on whether they would play that weekend or not that's just one example of many that the clubs kind of run themselves they vote on the salary cap they have to agree on the salary cap they vote on a lot of different major decisions in the game and ultimately i think that's part of the reason that they haven't got their house in order sooner, which I think is the point I believe that Mark was made, making with that tweet. The clubs could have prevented this. They could have made decisions that were the, in the best interest of the game and sustainable, whereas over the years they haven't. And that's part of the reason we find ourselves in this situation. So as I say, I think an independent regulator, someone to come in almost like a commissioner type figure in the NFL or NBA or in those kind of, you see it a lot in American sports, in the AFL, in Australia as well. You grow the game in a way 
that is sustainable and also in the best interest for the game as well in what that might look for look what that might look like so i hope blue sky thinking perhaps that from all this situation from what has been the worst season of professional rugby because we've lost three clubs in the premiership it gives them something to build upon or at least give them something to build upon is probably the wrong turn of phrase but it highlights the issues enough that drastic measures are taken to try and improve things in the future. That, for me, is what absolutely has to come out of this. They need independent regulation. The game needs to start running itself sustainably. And if that means that for the next couple of decades, English clubs can't compete in Europe, then so be it. Because you need to get your house in order at home first before they can look further afield. Whereas if they just try and spend like the French clubs do or try and compete with the top clubs in Europe, then we're going to see more situations like this. So that's just my view on it. Um, But we'll see what actually happens. Whether it leads to a bigger reset, a wider reset will be interesting as well, because I even look at the amount of games clubs play. And I think that's unsustainable. And we're talking about player welfare in this day and age. I think there's so much now of what we know about professional rugby now that there's no way you'll do it like that if you were turning back the clocks and starting upon professionalism in the game. Um, But anyway, the final point that I'll kind of mention really is about the players. Um, Obviously, a lot of the clubs in the Premiership now have got their budget sorted. They're not going to have as much room to sign these players. I have seen some rumours that the likes of Henry Arundel, Tom Pearson, Will Joseph, a few others are talking to various different premiership clubs. So maybe we'll see them pop up on short-term contracts for a year or so, like we saw with a lot of the Worcester players after what happened with them. So good for those guys, those other players. Can they go drop down into the championship? Are there going to be options overseas in, say, Pro D2 over in France or whatever it might be? But it's a... Just another really, really sad and desperate situation. And don't forget as well, by the way, on club finances, can't, I can't remember exactly when it is, either next season or certainly in the next few years, the Premiership clubs will get an opportunity to vote on increasing the salary cap again. And they don't. it doesn't have to be a unanimous agreement. I can't remember off the top of my head the exact amount of votes they need. But that could be a possibility, that the clubs once again could vote to increase that salary cap, even though a lot of them are in a pretty dire financial situation. Another example that we need independent regulation. That's my view on it. You can drop a comment down below. Give me your thoughts on this whole situation. Um, If you can subscribe to the channel and like the video as well, would massively, massively appreciate it. And as I said at the top, obviously, all our thoughts go to the players and staff at London Irish. But I'll see you in the next one.